Hey friends, another video here, and we're gonna talk about rebuilding a jet pump on a Sea-Doo personal watercraft. So here's what the story is. Uh, those have, that have been following and those that are new. Um, so got the 1997 Sea-Doo SP, you call it the death trap. This thing's got a uh, 717 in there bored out with dual 40 millimeter carbs over jetted, factory performance pipe stage one, uh, Solos, impeller concord 1624 in the last video i took this thing out and i was running it and it seemed to run okay and i even asked a couple people on a forum i said you know check this video out how does this thing sound seems like it was running okay but then i called a couple people and i talked to the guy at Impros. Uh, they repitch uh, props, they sell props, they, they know a lot about building racing sea -Dews. And upon talking to this guy, he said, listen, it, it takes thousands of dollars for you to max out that propeller that you have. And the way that I described it to him was, it feels like I'm out of prop. I thought that was a tall prop, a 1624. And you know, it was hitting the rev limiter uh, or at least cavitating. and. Yeah, it's got some serious pull, but it just doesn't have the top speed that I thought I would have. So he was talking to me and it sounds like I have a problem. And I'm gonna take his advice because he knows way more about this than I do. Um, even though I put a new prop or impeller and a new wear ring in here, a uh, new neoprene gasket sealed it up, something's not right. So what are we gonna do? We're going to rebuild this pump again. And I'll take you a tour of rebuilding it. It's not that hard. You could do it yourself instead of spending thousands or hundreds of dollars bringing your jet ski to the shop every time. But the big difference, and let's see if I can get in here and check this out. I don't know if you'll see this in the camera. Where is it? Here it is. I don't know if this will show up. Inside, there's a fin that is bent. This is a plastic vein pump in here. So basically I'll show you right now what I'm going to be rebuilding and why it's different than what I'm putting on here because, or what I have on here now, because I mean, if you're going to have this much power and this much work into it, you know, you want to make sure this pump is going to be built to go out in the monster hole at the Sebastian Inlet in the ocean and really keep up with the big guys, right? Another thing that's coming in a video that I got to uh, show you that I ordered, you see that? That's the stock SP intake grate. And I called Works Racing Products because Works is the only one that makes an aftermarket racing intake grate for a 97 SP. Believe it or not, this is really not meant to go that fast. Um, so I talked to them and they said, yeah, we do make one and uh, this will significantly push water into that pump. It's going to really make that pump uh, get fed with enough water. So between the intake grate under here and the uh, inside of this impeller or the uh, jet pump here, I gotta, you know, I gotta fix that stuff in order to make it really put out what I want it to put out. Let me show you what I'm gonna rebuild. Man, it's Africa hot out here. It's like 90, 98 today, Florida. It's ridiculous, it's not even June. So this is a pump that I've had in my parts box. Now take a look at this. Let me zoom in a little bit, try to get some light on this so you can see it. Okay, this is what they call a bronze vein pump. You can see the veins inside here are actually metal, they're bronze, brass, bronze, whatever you call them. And those hold up a lot better than a plastic vein pump. Now the outside of this pump is plastic, but the inside, you know, um, you could, if you couldn't see on the video a minute ago, one of these veins inside my uh, plastic pump is bent. Now that does cause the flow not to come out like it should. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this pump as a candidate and rebuild this one. I have a couple parts I ordered. The first thing that I did, which may or may not be good, I'm not going to find out. I ordered a new wear ring, of course. Um, the wear ring I have in the other one on the ski now is new, but it was a uh, knockoff to an OEM and it was a Delrin, which is plastic kind of. This is, I think, a WSM stainless steel wear ring got a stainless steel innard. And the thing about this, this may be a problem. Why? Because the wear ring is designed to be the, the break point in your pump. Let's say you suck up a rock, right? Instead of trashing your $300 racing impeller, you trash the $30, you know, Delrin 
plastic wear ring here. Uh, it's very crucial that the clearance between the impeller to the wear ring is completely tight so that that's what creates your, your jet thrust, okay? Well, my ring is fine so far, but I've been told that the stainless ones really meet that Solas prop a lot better and uh, you'll have pretty much zero clearance. And the only downfall is if I suck up a rock in this stainless steel impeller, it's gonna probably trash my impeller, okay? Um, if it doesn't take a chunk out of this. So this is not a forgiving part now. This is meant to get maximum thrust. Well, some people say OEM, Neo, uh, OEM Delrin is the best. Well, we're gonna find out, but I got that. I also got another neoprene seal, okay? And the neoprene seal is very important from the guy at uh, Impros that said, you know, the neoprene seal goes between the hull and this pump here. What you don't want, you see this wear ring right here, I don't know where this, what boat this came off of. This wear ring has to meet that hull with this seal like this. And it's gotta be airtight. You get a little bit of air sucking in here. This is the suction side of the pump. So the water goes in from under the watercraft and it goes into the pump and it comes out uh, jet thrust out the back. So, you know, uh, this has got to be perfect. So I'm going to make sure that when I cut this ring out of here, I'll show you how to do that. And I put this one in, I get it flush, that I'm going to clean the hull, clean all this and make sure that when I stick this onto the hull, there's a perfect seal to get no you know, air in. That will eliminate cavitation and improve thrust. From JetSkiPlus.com, I did order a bearing rebuild, uh, pump rebuild bearing kit, okay? This has the seals for the Venturi and the nose cone and all that. We're gonna take this to the buddy shop. We're gonna press out the old bearings, press in the new ones. You know, these bearings, I don't think are too bad. They're really not that loud. I just don't know the condition of this. So why mess around and use some, some bearings that could be on their way out? So JetSkiPlus.com had this for my Sea-Doo. And they also had this here. This is the uh, anti-rattle plastic jet pump nose cone. So you can see the nose cone on here is the original bronze one. And that may be fine, that may be usable, but I just figured I'd get the anti-rattle so it doesn't make so much noise. It is gonna be longer. Now, I don't think that's gonna give me any performance, but they do make uh, out there somewhere, Riva or somebody, makes performance nose cones that are adjustable to give you different thrust patterns. And I don't think this is going to do that. This is just gonna be a replacement. Um, so we'll do that. Now, one more thing that I ordered, this is a WSM pump fitting. And the reason I had to get that was because when I rebuild this pump, you can see that this one right here is busted. These are your baler tubes here for sucking out the water at the bottom of the hull. And this is what really feeds the water into your engine. So without that, you ain't getting no water into your engine to cool it down. That's plastic, okay, and that busted off in there. So I have a metal one, and I'm gonna tap that out or get those plastic out. I'm gonna thread this in, and that makes sure that's gonna be, you know, solid. These, I'm gonna clean up this, whatever this looks like, liquid nails, I guess. I'm gonna clean all this up and uh, make sure that I do put uh, silicone around that when I made it to the hull. But um, I'm not sure what impeller this is. My Solos is going in here. This looks like a stock impeller. And uh, I don't know what pitch it is, um, if it's even worth saving or usable. Maybe it'll fit on a GTX I have, I don't know. First, I'll take the impeller off, and then uh, I'll take the shaft out, the impeller shaft out, and then I'm gonna cut this wear ring out. I'm gonna show you how I do it to get this out. That's another thing. These you can cut out pretty easily. These stainless steel ones, whenever I have to change that, I have no idea how that's coming out. First thing I wanna do is take off the nose cone here. On this pump, it happens to be an eight millimeter ratchet or wrench. When you take this nose cone off, you probably gotta have some oil or a mixture of oil and water in there. So do it the redneck way here and pull it off over a piece of cardboard. Try not to mess up this seal surface here. But sometimes a gasket is a little tough. And look, you can see, oh, it smells terrible. There's some uh, mixture of a little bit of water with some of that uh, gear oil in there. So one of these gaskets is probably leaking. Now here's one problem right here. You can see, if I take this pump and I move that prop, watch what happens. See the shaft moving? Check this out, ready? So something's not right there. That's why I chose to rebuild it because I have no idea what the condition is of this. You can hear this clinging in there. That thing's all over the place. 
The tool you're gonna need is this impeller removal tool. Guys, I've tried being cheap. I tried bending a drive shaft to make one of these. Just spend the $10. This is a Solos, and this goes right into the prop here, the impeller. Like, well, there you go like that. And then you put yourself a ratchet on one side and an open end wrench on the other of the dry shaft and watch this. Look at this. Takes it right off. Saves you a lot of time getting this impeller off. And if yours doesn't come off this easy, I, I get it because it's probably welded on there or salt corroded on there, but this makes it a hell of a lot easier. Now when you have this impeller off, the shaft should have a big washer on here like this, should come off, and then the shaft should pull right out, okay? Now if it doesn't pull out and you gotta bump it, okay, that's fine, it just depends. This one is covered in oil and probably uh, was taken apart recently and someone threw it back together because this thing wasn't welded together like they normally are. So here's your impeller shaft. You wanna inspect this for uh, major deflection so there's not a hump on it or no bend in it. And these are just as cheap. Sometimes you buy the kit for a hundred and something dollars. Jetskiplus.com has them. Comes with the shaft and everything. This shaft uh, appears to be in pretty good condition without looking at deflection or anything. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, take my chance, but uh, I'm gonna take this bearing off here and uh, I'll dry the shaft off. I'll kind of roll it around, make sure it's okay. And then we'll push the bearings out here. So I got the shaft here like this. Make sure you don't get no dirt on it. Put it in a box or something. Now, your pump here, there's where the bearings are inside, okay? So you're gonna need a press, and the press is going to go in. You know, there's a bearing on each side, on this side and on this side. Um, this one looks actually really good on the face in here, so when I pop these out, it shouldn't be too bad. I clean it up. There's a couple metal shavings. There's a, looks like a piece of an O-ring right here, uh, right there on my finger. So we'll clean all that out, and also then I'm going to show you how to get uh, this wear ring out of here. Uh, I'll do that now before I put the new bearings in because sometimes this makes a mess when you're cutting this thing out of here and you don't want to get that plastic in the new bearings. Now for this next part, it's a little tricky, and this, there's a couple different ways of doing this, but you'll never pull this out. Some people say you can throw this in a freezer, and you know, deep freezer, and it'll shrink the uh, Delrin wear ring and it slides right out. And that's great if you have a refrigerator, I mean a freezer that size, I don't. And I wouldn't put this greasy mess in a freezer that I had food anyways. I'm not gonna buy a freezer for a wear ring once a year. So what I do is I get this little hand saw here. You could use a hacksaw blade, or you could even use something on a drill like a Dremel. And what you're gonna do is what I do is cut a notch here in this, okay? A notch about three inches wide. And then you take this chisel right here and you chisel that section out. Once you chisel that section out, thing comes right out. Uh, it makes a little bit of mess, it's a little bit of cutting, but it might save you from, you know, complaining you can't get it out and you wanna take it to the shop. I guarantee the shop is not putting it in the freezer overnight. They're gonna cut the thing out. So, um, unless they have a different way that I'm unaware of. So, let's cut this notch out here and then uh, we'll nail it out. Make sure you don't cut through the wear ring into the pump housing. That's not what you wanna do. But you can see on here when you start getting kinda of close, uh, it's hard to get in the back, but when you cut out a strip here or a notch, you can knock it out with a chisel and start getting the chisel in behind here, it pops right out. And after a lot of cutting, pounding, swearing, and two shots of fireball. What you have here is, if you can see that, I cut like a groove in that wear ring, okay? And all you really do once you chisel that groove in there is you just kinda pop this thing out of here like that, you see? Makes it so much easier when you chisel that piece out. Now, chiseling it out is not as easy, but so, wear rings out. That one actually didn't look, that one actually looked almost new. Look at this. Look, there's like no, there's real no grooves in it. That was like a new wear ring, but oh well. The main thing is you wanna make sure that the, the surface where that new wear ring is gonna go in, you see right here? You wanna make sure this is clean. It's gotta go right up flush to that bronze part, but I'm gonna, Clean the inside of this out. I'm gonna clean all this nasty tar 
that's like tar on there okay hair and clean all that out push the bearings out and then uh, we'll start putting the wear ring in it goes in a lot easier than the way it came out instead of using a press to pull it out i actually pounded these out with a punch here i'll use the press to put them in i got the new ones like a glove. Gotta have a press to get in there straight. Don't try to hammer it in. Don't forget your little seal here. This is to keep the gear oil in there. You just gotta bump that in to where it's flush. With the bearings in, now I have the wear ring and I'm gonna just put this in very gently. So it didn't go in as tight as the Delrin wear rings normally go in. The place where I did chisel it out, I did put a little bit of silicone uh, Permatex in there, some uh, real heavy duty strong Permatex. And uh, that's in case I did take out just a tiny bit of the plastic on the inside, but I did have to hammer it in. It shouldn't go anywhere. Um, if it is really tight to get in, that's good. That's how it should be. Normally these are manufactured just a tad bit larger so that they're in there real tight. Uh, but this, this shouldn't be going anywhere. And um, so let's put the shaft in. I'm trying to beat the rain here. So I have the shaft pushed in, uh, just, you know, laying in there. And before I do any other cleaning, I don't want to get anything in those new bearings there. So what I'll do is I'll take my uh, O-ring here for the nose cone, okay? And I'll take uh, my nose cone here, and I'll go ahead and loop that O-ring up a little bit, and I'll go ahead and put that in because uh, I want to make sure that compartment is sealed. That way I don't get anything else in there as I clean it. And there's a seal on the back, so uh, you don't really have to lube this little O-ring here. But I like to. I'm going to use what I normally use to fill the pump to lubricate this little O-ring here. This is Klotz synthetic jet pump uh, lubricant with tech, you know, Technoplate. I'm going to tell you all about Klotz stuff. I have a lot of Klotz stuff here. It's a video coming up. But I just put a little dab here just to make sure it's not dry, and I just run it around. I mean, I don't think you need to do that. You can grease it. You can do whatever. But I put that on, and then. We're just going to, uh, big thing is you want to make sure you position this cone in here with the fill hole on the top. So being that this is the top side of the pump like this, this is going to go this way. Because this is a anti rattle nose cone, it's got that spring inside. So you can't just pop it on like you could with any other nose cone. You gotta, gotta kinda gotta get those bolts threaded in there first with the spring tension and torque it on there you know, so that it uses the bolts to grab the nose cone and bring it in. So that's really gonna keep that shaft uh, taut with that spring in there and keep it from rattling back and forth. Should make it a lot, uh, sound a lot better on the trailer. Okay, so I got that on there tight. Now the thing is the bearing compartment should be sealed and Sea-Doo does recommend in the manual that you unscrew this little Allen key and you hook a pump up to it and pressure test to make sure there's nothing leaking here. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna take my chances. But I am gonna fill this up now and get that shaft turned and get those bearings lubricated. Um, and also the thing is, now the bearing compartment is sealed. So when I go clean some of this off, this patina here, it's not going to throw any of the metal shavings or brass shavings into the pump. That's really what I, what I didn't want. The CD manual says that this pump compartment for the, uh, oil does hold 2.7 ounces, I think. And I, they also say, you know, I don't know where that O-ring went. And they also say, fill it up till it's at the bottom of the threads in that little hole. So I'll just, you know, do my little magic here and just start pouring in. 
When it's full, you want to stop, turn the shaft a couple times, tip it up, make sure that it's really in there and turn it some more and then add some more. Don't just stop when it comes pouring out of the hole at the top. You want to make sure you get the appropriate amount of jet lube in there. So see, I'll put some in and I'll turn that shaft like this, hold it up a little bit as I'm turning the shaft, allow some in there and we'll put some more in. This stuff is the best. It's clots red here. It even smells good. Gotta check out that video coming up with all the clot stuff. This is all I've ever used in two strokes. My Banshee, my jet skis. It's all I've ever used is clots lubricants. And let me tell you what, it's never failed me. It's a lot more than 2.7 ounces, I can tell you that. I think this little nose cone I put on does add some volume to that. It's almost the rest of the bottle there. It wasn't the whole bottle, but that bottle is uh, four ounces, so it's at least half of that bottle. I just opened a whole another bottle of clots. Watch, it's gonna hold like a sixteenth of an ounce. I just opened that whole second bottle to just top it off. Okay, I got this thing filled up right to the brim. I mean, uh, if I could fit any more in there, it'd have to come out somewhere. I got this thing full. So we're gonna leave the rest for the next video because basically this pump is rebuilt, okay? I haven't cleaned this yet. You'll see that in the next video. I don't think I need to show using a wire brush in there and cleaning that, but the majority of the video showed rebuilding this entire pump. So what we have here is a new nose cone. We have new bearings on the inside, both sides. We have a new seal on this side, okay? New seal here. We have a new wear ring in here. And I have a new water inlet tube that's going on here. I'm gonna take these off. This actually comes off uh, all like this, okay? And I can clean all this off with a little wire brush, get that nice and clean, get all this gunk right here off, okay? <sighs> yeah, that's all, that's on there. And then once I get it all cleaned off, I could slide it back on. That's pretty much it, the pump is rebuilt. So I have to take my prump, uh, pump off to get my prop off in order to put it on here. So we'll show you that in the next video as I mount this on the back of my death trap here. Until then, I hope this at least showed you, look, this may not be the most professional video. This may be something you've seen a thousand times, but there's always somebody out there that learns something from going to YouTube watching videos like this. And I am just talented to bring you videos and be able to speak like this. God gave me a talent and I'm putting it to good use. So if you like what you see, if you found anything beneficial or if you're just using this to watch instead of TV, leave a comment below, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, post it on a Facebook page somewhere. And pretty soon these things are gonna be just balls to the wall in the water. Thanks for watching guys.